If you are sick of job interviews, cover letters, waiting for a promotion, asking for a raise, getting ghosted by companies, having an annoying boss, freelancing might be the perfect job for you. Hey folks, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Erin McGough. I'm a filmmaker and content creator living in New York, and I've been a freelancer for almost seven years. So today we're talking about how you can start freelancing like right now. I started freelancing actually back in high school. I got my first freelancing client. My family owned like a small recording studio and we would have bands come in and I would make these like little music videos for them and charge like 300 bucks. <laughs> but I always thought that I was going to get a full-time job. I always thought throughout film school, I was gonna graduate, move to New York and get a full-time job at NBC. I thought I was gonna be going to 30 Rock every day and working in an office. But then when I graduated, I was actually in the middle of directing my first feature film and I actually couldn't get a full-time job because I needed to leave the country to go film. So in the meantime, I started just picking up gigs wherever I could. I started freelancing, working on set. And I found out that not only do I really like freelance video editing, but I was told I was pretty good at it. And I would just get to, to edit videos and get paid by the hour. And then two years into it, I was making six figures and not even working full time. So if you're somebody who's looking for a flexible job, a work from home job, a job where you can actually make a decent amount of money, freelancing might be that for you. First, let's look at the pros. Pros of freelancing, you get to work from wherever you want in the world. You can travel wherever you want, whenever you want. Autonomy, you have complete control over your own life and your days and your weeks. Unlimited income, you can make however much or how little you want depending on your rates and how much you want to work. And lastly, no boss, no people, no annoying coworkers, no office politics, no being told where and when to be and how to do something. You are entirely in control of your own life and your own days and your own career. Now the cons. It's unstable. You are not getting a paycheck every two weeks. Some months will make a lot of money, some months you won't make any money, but we are going to talk more about that later in this video. Two, no benefits, no 401k match, no healthcare plan, it's all up to you. Number three, it can be difficult if you don't have an entrepreneurial or business mindset. If you're not somebody who is driven by money and success and results, freelancing probably isn't the best career for you. And lastly, you have to be disciplined. You have to be able to wake up in the morning when you have no meetings and no boss telling what to do and you have to figure out what to do to make money that day. But we are going to get into all of this in the video. So let's talk about the three steps you need to take to get ready. Step one is you have to pick a skill. That is the first step. You're not making an LLC. You're not making business cards. You're not doing any of that stuff. You're just picking your skill. You want to pick a skill that you're naturally good at and you don't mind doing it because you're going to be doing it all the time. You also want to pick a skill that's in demand. For example, you could try to freelance as a soccer player, but there's not much demand for freelance soccer players. And if you're wondering, Aaron, how am I supposed to find what in-demand skills are out there? First of all, you can go to websites like Upwork or Fiverr and just kind of browse who's hiring for what. You can search in the industry that you already work in to see what freelancers exist in that industry. Or you can download my freelance guide, I'll put it down in the description, that has over 360 currently in-demand monetizable freelance ideas for you. But you have to pick something that's in demand. The creative industry uses freelancers like it's their business. If you wanna charge like hundreds of dollars an hour, I would definitely go into marketing or tech. And then there's a bunch of other freelance gigs. Step two, don't quit your day job. Now your approach to freelancing differs if you're early, mid, or advanced in your career. And in my guide, I actually break down each of those. So for example, if you've been a graphic designer for 20 years, your approach is gonna be entirely different than somebody who's been a graphic designer for two years. Cause you already have a built out portfolio and connections, but somebody new doesn't have anything yet. But the most important thing in the beginning for anybody is to not quit your day job. You wanna ramp up your freelancing career as you ramp down your professional nine to five career. So as you're working your day job, what's paying your bills, what's working for you right now, you wanna spend your nights, your mornings, your weekends, whatever other spare time you have, building up your freelance career. And again, that is gonna look different for how experienced you are. But for most of you who are beginners, early career, it's gonna look like this. Phase one, don't quit your day job, ramp up your freelancing career, we've established that. Now your second priority is picking that skill, picking that hard skill, what is going to be your offering, what's the market demanding. The third step is saving up a three to six month emergency fund. This is a non-negotiable. So before you even think about attempting to freelance full-time, you must have three to six months of an emergency fund saved up. So that is your living expenses for three months, preferably six months, saved up in a bank account. It can be in a high yield savings account. It doesn't matter where it is. You just need to have access to it in case something happens. You know, like a global pandemic. No, seriously, I had to dip in my fund in like April, 2020. It was 
not a good time. <laughs> not only is this practical advice, so if you have a dry spell, you, you can pay your rent that month. It's so important for your emotional and mental sanity. You know that you always have that little pillow to fall back on. The next step is that you wanna set deadlines for yourself. The problem that a lot of people have is that they say they're gonna try freelancing, but they don't really have anybody to hold them accountable, and it kinda of just slips down into the ether. So you wanna say, by this date, I'll have my website up and running. By this date, I'll have two clients. By this date, I'll have you know, my offering. That timeline can be as stretched as you want, but it's just so important to yourself to keep those promises to yourself. And the last step of phase one is to take on like free or low rate work. So you wanna take on work that you find really interesting and would help boost your portfolio. And if you're just starting out, people aren't gonna pay you your true rate quite yet. You can reach out to local companies, friends and family, and just ask them if you can just do some free work for them. And that is gonna help you build your portfolio, which is so, so important. Okay, so if you've graduated from phase one, we're going into phase two. Phase two is when you launch your website. So as a freelancer, people always ask me, Erin, do I really need a website? To which I reply, all you need is a website. That is the most important thing. 99% of the companies that you apply to in your first year are going to meet your website before they meet you. Your website is who you are. And that's a great thing because you can design your website however you want. You can make it look fantastic. I personally use Squarespace for my portfolio, but I know other people like Cargo Collective, Wix.com, and then of course there's WordPress. But yes, you must have a beautiful, functional, professional portfolio. The next step is you're going to want to start aggressively reaching out. So you're gonna to wanna to send at least 10 to 20 cold emails a week. You're gonna to wanna to create a spreadsheet of all the potential companies that you wanna work for. You need to reach out to all your warm connections, reach out to people that you went to school with, announce that you're freelancing on LinkedIn. You need to regularly follow up. Remember, an email doesn't count if you haven't followed up yet. And just like a little side note here, I teach freelancing for people who want to make a lot of money and not work that much. There are lots of other people who teach about freelancing who are going to teach you about how to bid and how to win gigs and how to get around Upwork and Fiverr and get those jobs. That's one way to approach freelancing. That's like how 99% of freelancers globally approach it. I personally would recommend not playing that game. It's exhausting. Your ROI isn't going to be good and it's not sustainable in my opinion. You need to focus on becoming the cream of the crop, I call it. You not only want to be somebody who is damn good at their job and is really skilled, but you also want to be somebody who is great to work with. You have excellent communication skills. You tell companies, I would be happy to help you with that. You send them Christmas cards. I'm telling you guys, you have to be the most amazing. You have to think about yourself as a company and not a freelancer. You are customer service. You are an account executive. You are your own secretary. You are a copywriter. You are a marketer. You are a CEO. You are a CFO. You are the entire company and the freelancers who really stand out and make a lot of money and freelance for long periods of time without any trouble are the people who are professionals and are entrepreneurs and are fantastic people to work with. They know customer service. So my methods are to teach you how to charge high hourly rates so you can work less and make more money. I'm not about the hamster wheel playing the rat race, y'all. I am about creating a life that you love the most efficient way possible, and that's, that's what we're talking about in this video. I digress. Next step is to invest in systems. So I recommend in the beginning, keeping costs as low as possible. And honestly, freelancing has a pretty low barrier to entry. There's not that many costs associated with starting a freelancing career, but there are a couple systems that you do want to invest in in the beginning because it's going to help solve so much headache down the road. The first one is accounting software. I personally use QuickBooks. A lot of people use QuickBooks Self-Employed and I highly recommend it. But it's really important to be able to see clearly how much money is coming in, how much money is going out because come tax season, you're going to wish that you had done that the whole time. <laughs> and the second software that I recommend is invoicing software. Now I think QuickBooks does have invoicing built into it, but I personally use a separate software called FreshBooks. I've been using FreshBooks for years and I personally really like it. My clients like it. The user interface is really easy to use. So I recommend it. And the last step of phase two is to maybe quit your job. So when we reach that tipping point where your freelancing career is becoming so time consuming that maybe it's even impacting your full-time job, that's when it's time to jump ship. And that's gonna be a very exciting time for you to be able to have all that mental space that you are dedicating from eight to five at your full-time job, now free to dedicate to your freelancing career. Like 
it's gonna make a really, really big difference. Okay, so I'll get into phase three really briefly. This probably isn't relevant to most people in this video, but if you've been freelancing for a few years, this might be you. So in phase three, that's when you're going to wanna really establish your business. You can either keep operating as a sole proprietor like I did, you can create an LLC if that's what you want. And if you're making a significant amount of money, you can incorporate as an S corp, which I did. If you don't understand anything that I just said, just talk to an accountant, they'll explain it all to you. Fun fact, I actually found my accountant on Upwork as a freelancer, so that's fun enough. Next step, you gotta raise your rates. So every six months or every 12 months, you just gotta raise your rates a little bit more and more. Next step is that you really need to create marketing systems. So whether that's social media, lead magnets, a newsletter, writing articles, YouTube videos, any of those things are great, but you wanna start establishing some more marketing tactics, unless you're getting a lot of business through word of mouth. In that case, you're probably good to go. And the last step is of course, to just keep building relationships. And we're gonna get into why that's so important next. And of course, if y'all want more information on those three steps, please download my freelancing guide down in the description. It's 115 pages long and is everything you need to know to get started with freelancing. And step three is get clients. This is the part that really scares people. They're like, how am I going to get people to pay me to freelance for them? And I get it, but let me let you in on a little secret. This is a little secret that, that we freelancers don't like to tell people, but uh, I'm gonna tell you. Sustainable, high earning freelancers are not spending their time getting clients. In the beginning, you'll spend a lot of your time getting clients, but if you are the cream of the crop, if you're great to work with and you do great work, people are going to start referring you. It's called word of mouth. I'm all word of mouth at this point. People are gonna start coming at you and believe it or not, you're gonna to have to start saying no to people. There are three ways that high earning, sustainable and successful freelancers get clients on a regular basis and don't stress out about it. The first way is retainer clients. So retainer clients just means you have a client who has a guaranteed spend for a term. So they have told you, I'm going to pay you $5,000 a month for the next six months to edit two YouTube videos for me a month. So you know now that yes, it's just one client, but you have a retainer with them for the next six months, which means over the next six months, you are going to get $30,000 from that client. If you're a video editor and you get just three clients like that, that's $90,000 a year right there. And so the trick of the trade, this is what I've always done, is get retainer clients that pay your base living expenses. So for example, if I live off of $5,000 a month, all I have to do is get two retainer clients who are each going to pay me $2,500 a month, and then my living expenses for the month are good to go. Any work that I get additionally is extra income for me. Oh my gosh, what? Why is he, where is he backing up to? There's nowhere to back up. It's a school bus. How dare kids go to school? Kids don't need school, they need freelancing skills. Speaking of school, if you wanna learn about websites where you can learn freelancing skills, I will link to a bunch down in the description and also they're in my guide, so love them. Okay, back to it. The second way that successful freelancers build sustainability is by doing something called permalancing. Permalancing has been a huge part of my career and how I've been able to see inside of so many other companies. It's basically when you freelance for a company for a long period of time. So different states and jurisdictions have different rules around this. Technically, a company is only supposed to hire you for a limited amount of time to work on one project. But sometimes companies will need a bit more help than that. So you can work for one company for a three month contract, six month, nine month, even a year. And permalancing is low key how so many freelancers are able to make a ton of money. Because here is a thing that so many people don't get about freelancing and companies. Companies love freelancers. Like when you're reaching out to a company, they want to hear from you, okay? They are not like, oh, a freelancer reaching out. They're like, yes, we always are looking for freelancers. <laughs> Companies love freelancers because we are cheap and non-committal. Like when a company hires a full-time W-2 employee, it's so much work for them. They have to pay their healthcare and their 401k match and part of their employment income taxes. And then they have to wait until they quit or they get fired. Then they fire them, they have to build up a case, and they have to have HR. And there's all of these things associated with having a full-time employee. But freelancers, we're non-committal. Just pay us by the hour. <laughs> That sounds so bad. <laughs> but seriously, freelancers, that's why we're able to charge higher hourly rates because they aren't paying our healthcare premiums. They are doing a 401k match. They are paying for any of that stuff. So we're actually cheaper for the companies even though we actually can get paid more from the company. And so even in an age of recession or if a company has a hiring freeze, guys, they're still hiring freelancers. They love us. We are low maintenance. And freelancers also love companies. 
it's a more casual relationship. I think that's one of my favorite things about freelancing is this like power dynamic in a normal corporate space, like I'm the boss and I'm the employee. It's like this when you're a freelancer. It's like you're just completely, you're on the same team and there's just no like weird icky power dynamic. And the last way that successful freelancers create a sustainable income is by expanding their business. So you can sell products, you can sell courses, you can sell consulting services. These are all great ways to expand your services so that you're not just charging by the hour, but you can also generate some passive income on the side. And before we go, I just wanna leave you guys with one thing. I've never met somebody who regretted trying to freelance. I've only met people who regretted not trying to go out on their own and do their own thing. If you dip your toes in, like the worst case scenario is that you just go back to the job that you currently have. But then the best case scenario is that it completely transforms your life. You get your life back, you get your days back, you get to make more money, travel whenever you want, be home, just do whatever you want all day. So if I were you, I would look into it because the worst case scenario is that you just don't like it that much. And that's completely fine, but you just don't wanna spend the rest of your life wondering what if. Oh, you guys, I have literally so much more that I can say on freelancing. I literally wrote a 115 page guide detailing every single thing. I spent months writing this guide. Oh, by the way, for my American friends, I also talk all about your healthcare options and retirement and all of that in the guide in depth. So if you're wondering about that, definitely go down on the guide, but I have to cut myself off here. So thank you so much for tuning in. Remember that you got this and I'll see you next time.